Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. Just a heads up for everybody, um, there won't be a TFCC call tonight for the first time in a long time. Uh, I just decided to enjoy my birthday today and tonight, and uh, we will resume um, a week from today. There, there will be a reverse aging health call on Friday. And I want to thank everybody uh, for the birthday congratulations, uh, emails, and uh, e-cards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In between our thoughts is the sweetest song, the most gentle melody, inviting us home to ourselves. This internal love song is soothing each of us now. Tend, tend to the song that sings within you. Tend to the song that sings within you. Right now on this planet, and I'm sure you guys have picked it up as well, there's a fragment a disarray, confusion, and all of that is based upon the unknown, right? The fear. And we remember that fear is a thought. It has no energy. It just has no power. But all of us, none of us are exempt from it, one time, shape, form, or another. We have fear. We have fear. And we embrace it. And sometimes it's good. It's not always a negative to have fear. Uh, fear helps us move beyond it. Uh, and without fear, there wouldn't be any courage with any of us. So letting go of fear and becoming unstoppable is a, is a very good idea. You can conquer almost any fear if you will only make up your mind to do so. Okay? You can conquer almost any fear if you will only make up your mind to do so. For to do so, for remember, fear doesn't exist anywhere except in the mind. Dale Carnegie. How many times have you been stopped dead in your tracks because of fear? Where would you be today if you were fearless and unstoppable? What dreams would you have manifested? Fear is the most debilitating energy that we all face on a daily basis and can create a mountain out of an anthill. By learning how to transcend our fears, we can open up doors to success in areas of our lives we never imagined were possible. Knowing the secret to being fearless, we will start living our dreams and having the life we truly desire. Knowing the secret to being fearless, we will start living our dreams and having the life we truly desire. So really, what is fear? Fear is an emotional response that happens when we imagine or believe that something is going to harm us in some way. Fear is an emotional response that happens when we imagine or believe that something is going to harm us in some way. Fear can be healthy when it provides the valuable service of keeping us safe from physical dangers such as a hungry mountain lion or stepping in front of a high-speeding truck. It activates our adrenaline glands so that we can fight or take flight. Fear does have its place in this wildly active world that we're in. We live in and thus does keep us alive. A great acronym that we all know, we've heard before over and over again for fear, is false evidence appearing real. In many cases, 
fear is based on an overactive imagination. In many cases, fear is based on an overactive imagination. For instance, have you ever been home alone at night and begin to strain your ears for strange noises and imagine something hideous was lurking behind your curtain? If you then confronted your fear by turning on the light and moving the curtain to see a sacred mouse scurrying away, you'd be relieved and your monstrous thoughts would magically disappear. Once you see the reality of any situation, you realize that you never had anything to fear. So fear only has power over you if you do not face it. The moment you confront your fear and discover the truth, you are freed up inside and magically overcome it. Breaking through all the fears in our lives is simple. It really is. Simply realize the truth of who you are. Look deep down inside yourself and see what you are and that you are an infinite being, a soul who can never, ever die or be hurt by anything in this world. Realize you have been around for an eternity. The God within that body has been around for an eternity and will continue for eternity. There is nothing that can truly harm you nor change this divine truth about what you really are. To conquer all the fears in your life, all it takes is realizing this truth and living it. When you face your fears with this knowledge inside, there is nothing that you can possibly be afraid of. So there's a few things that are good to take into practice. For instance, this week or next week, let go of all your fears in your life by doing this powerful fear-freeing exercise. Make a list of all your fears. Some of the most common fears, the reason we make lists is because it's visual. A lot of us are visual, you know, and when we look at those, we write them down and we look at them. They have more impact, more lasting power, so to speak. So when you make a list of your fears and fears are fear of public speaking, fear of rejection by a loved one, fear of strangers meeting someone new, fear of being killed, making a mistake, doing something wrong, etc. Be specific about what it is that you truly are afraid of. Do not leave out any details after you have made your list. Look it over. Prioritize it from the most fearful to the least. And then two, determine how much pain these fears are causing you in your life. Determine how much pain these fears are causing you in your life. So on the back of the paper that you write down your fears, on the flip side, write down the answers to the following questions. What am I missing out on in this life because of these fears? What am I missing out on in this life because of these fears? What will my, my life look like if I continue to operate from these fears? What negative consequences could occur in the future if I continue to let fear control my life. And three, establish the benefits of overcoming your fears. Take a separate piece of paper. You can always refer back to this for years. Take a separate piece of paper. Write down the answers to these questions. What can I create once I overcome these fears? What could I create once I overcame, overcome these fears? How will my life be better once these fears no longer are real for me? What would I do, accomplish, or experience once these fears are absent from my life? And then, which many of us, we ignore our fears. We stack them. We rack them and stack them. And we, we don't pay attention to them. We hope they go away, right? 
So embracing your fear is the key to moving through any fear is to dive into the fearful feeling, which a lot of people won't do. They'd be amazed what happens when they do do it, decide to do it. And then you dive into the fearful feeling and realize the truth of who you are that is beneath it. Now, this technique alone has created amazing fast and enormous shifts in many of people. And we suggest that you do this exercise in a quiet place where you will not be disturbed. Sit back in a chair, probably like you're doing right now. Close your eyes. Imagine that one of your fears on your list is happening to you. The worst possible thing that could happen is happening. And let yourself truly feel what it'd be like to be in the situation. Once you are feeling the fear in your body, remain in the center of the fearful feeling. Stay there. Let it get stronger and bigger until you reach its maximum peak. Remain at the peak and breathe into this experience as long as you can. Don't get freaked out and bail out early. It is not real. It is all happening in your mind. Stay in the strongest feeling of the fear until it naturally becomes smaller and weaker on its own accord and then fades away. Once you fully allow yourself to feel all aspects of this fear inside you, something will naturally move you beyond the fear and into a peaceful feeling. When you find this place, you'll be done with that fear forever. It cannot return the same once you experience this natural release inside. There will be a deep stillness, emptiness, and silence when it is truly gone. Any ideas you have about your fear will seem like an old dream that has no real emotion attached to it. If the fearful energy tries to return, welcome it and refocus on the stillness, emptiness, and silence inside. From this silent space, it is easy to realize the truth that you are an infinite, infinite divine being of consciousness. It cannot ever be harmed. If your fear is strong and you've had it for years, you may want to get some support around the process and do it with a trained professional or a good friend. Yet, it is usually much more powerful to do this process alone and in the dark since it can help you to bring up even more fear inside. Face your fears and you'll free your life. Face your fears and you'll free your life. Do this exercise by yourself. And you'll establish the confidence that you yourself conquered your fear. After you've done one fear, go back through your list of fears and embrace them all. Every fear on your list is a gift. Since your true divine infinite nature is found within each one. Most of us, we... We take our fears and we, we have a closet, right? We put the fears in a closet. i got to deal with you right now and put you in a closet. Shut the door. And eventually the door is hard, getting harder and harder to shut because there's so many fears stacked in there. Every now and then one of them comes back and it, it surfaces, you know. And we ignore it. We ignore our fears. Because we feel that, hey, I, I don't need to pay attention to that. It'll go away. Sooner or later it will be gone. But see, the thing is it doesn't go away. It keeps cups coming back and coming back. You get that uneasy feeling, and you say, oh, geez, here we go again. But by doing this, you eliminate them. And imagine, by practicing this, you will not have fear. As soon as fear arises, fear comes from the ego mind. The ego mind is very insecure. So it conjures up the fear. Now, when we look at the thought, right, which is fear, it's a thought, then we, a lot of us inadvertently embrace that thought. 
we move, it's energy, we move the energy into form and create it into reality and we experience it. That's what we do with everything. So it's kind of like your choice. You choose. You take responsibility for your own life. And you say, well, I'm going to start embracing my fears. I mean, I'm going to let them just expand as far as they want. And you'll be surprised to find out that then they are no more. And every time they try to return, again, they are no more. Fearless is a whole different way of being. Do we all have fears? Sure we do. Little ones, medium-sized ones, big ones. And we live with them, right? We live with those fears. Fear of failure, fear of wealth, fear of poverty, fear of death, fear of living, fear of happiness, fear of sadness. You see how many there are? And there are, too. There's people that fear being wealthy. And then there's other people that fear being poor. And then there's people that fear being happy. And there are those that fear being sad. And I've had people say, I didn't realize there were that many fears. They are. They're everywhere. And they're meant for us to conquer them, to overcome them. And as, and as many of you already know, the only way to overcome something is to face it head on. Say, come on in. How you doing? You know, what's your story? And see what happens is that when you begin to embrace that on your own and you're making your own decision, embrace it. You'll find that you will not have fear. I mean, it'll come in on times, but you'll you'll know to embrace it and it will be eliminated. And you talk about feeling lighter, you'll feel lighter. Much more lighter. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure that we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies that we are in. We know we're not the body. Right? We're not the character. We're not the personality. We're not our clothes. We're not our status in life. We are the God, the God source, the kingdom of God, the heaven. Within the body. So when you focus on your breath, it's pretty easy to do. I'm sure you've all done it one time or another. You focus on the breath. Easy and slowly in through the nose and easy and slowly out through the mouth. As you do this, you move yourself out of the ego mind, the subconscious mind. You leave them alone. You still them. And what do you notice happens moment to moment? Mind chatter. We all have mind chatter. 24-7. Gone. Right? Only in the now. Ego mind. Gone. Only in the now. Subconscious mind gone. And we put out, each of us put out, over 60,000 thoughts every 24 hours. We send this out to the universe. And see, when, when we say to the universe, we don't want, we don't want this, we don't want that, we don't want this, we don't want that, we'll get it. So it's, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a habit, it's a practice to get into and say, I don't really, I don't care to have that happen. Believe me, it sounds kind of minuscule, but shifting your frequency on those words is huge. Huge. I don't care to have that happen. Instead of, you don't want that to happen. In addition to the 60,000 thoughts, we have literally endless amounts of programs flying by us like clouds in the sky. Are they ours? No. They're everybody else's. And do we embrace those? Yeah, time, 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 and every now and then we'll embrace them. And, and sometimes we sense that, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, this isn't right here. 
we shouldn't uh, this doesn't feel right I, I don't know why but it's, it doesn't fit right doing this that's why because it's not your thought now to be gentle kind generous and humble with oneself all the time 24 7 infinity and beyond to be in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace at all times, 24-7, infinity and beyond. So when we're in the now and we wander off, it's not like we do it intentionally. We just wander off. We wander off in other thoughts. Or it seems like we wander off, but where are we? Then we say to ourselves, I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. 3,000% of the time, which is every time. So you'll be in the now. And really, you can, you know, you can argue with the ego mind forever. But the now is all any of us will ever have. Do any of us, can any of us guarantee that we will wake up tomorrow morning. Could Can we really, total honesty with ourselves, can we really guarantee that we'll wake up tomorrow morning? No, we can't. So doesn't it make sense to stay in the now, in the moment? Because when you do this, see, the ego mind doesn't exist in the now. It will fight you tooth and nail to keep you in the future, past, past, future, future, past, past, future, all the time. You see, it knows. If they, if he or she goes into the now, I don't exist. I can't have that happen. And as insecure as the ego mind is, you can see why it just fights tooth and now to keep you in the future, the past, past, future, future, past. And this is where we suffer. See? Following the ego mind is suffering. And it is. You just ask yourself, do I suffer when I follow the ego mind as my master? Yes, you do. You have expectations. You have attachments. You know, you expect things to happen. And you have attachments to the outcome of those things to happen. This is all the ego mind. This is the now allows us to watch the ego mind and the subconscious mind, right? So we watch it. We don't judge it, but we learn how it operates. So if you get a thought, right, and the thought is ego mind, right. you, you feel like you have to boast about something because someone's talking about something, or you feel you have to show off something because just you want to prove to somebody, okay? That's the ego. That's an ego mind thought. And you can identify it. And see, when you can identify it, you're halfway home. You say, that's an ego thought. That's an ego mind thought. Oh, so I, I'm not going to entertain that. You'd be amazed at what happens when we begin to, to understand really and truly who and what we are. When we finally figure out that we're not the body, that the body is temporary, many transformations will take place. And in, in the moment and in the now, you live every second as a celebration. You, you, move, into medit you move into a, um, a gratitude state during the course of your day. Gratitude all day long. And you say to yourself, you don't need to have a motivation to be in gratitude. You just do it. Like, right, birthdays and holidays and stuff, what? We give each other cards, right? Because we want to show the other person our appreciation and our love. But what about just giving a card whenever you feel like it, when you just want to do that for someone else? What about smiling just because you can? What about laughing uh, to yourself just because you can? Have you ever laughed at yourself or with yourself? In, in the truest, highest respect for oneself. Have you ever done that? You just start chuckling to yourself. Oh, boy, I can't believe I did that. No big deal, though. 
Yeah. Or you say to yourself, well, why am I doing this now? And you, you say you say to your, you know, well, Bill, you know, not a big deal. I love you. And you'd be surprised what happens. And this is and this a lot of people have a tough time doing this. Here's a real measuring stick for each of us. Not a judgment, just to kind of get a feel of where we're at emotionally with ourselves. When you look in a mirror, look at your eyes. Don't look at the wrinkles. Don't look at the sags or whatever. Look at the eyes. Look in the center of the eye. And then say, your name, and I love you. Do it a few times. Do it every morning. Do it at night. Now, a lot of people feel uncomfortable with that. They feel uncomfortable. They don't feel they don't feel right. It's not they're they're kind of they be a little guilty, a little embarrassed. Oh, this silly. You'd be amazed what that does to eliminate fear. Say your name's Mary Jane. I love you, Mary Jane. I love you, I love you, I love you. And as you as you begin to practice this, you will not stop doing it. This isn't ego mind. This is your heart. This is your appreciation for who and what you are. And when you look in those eyes and you look at the pupil and you see that dark, right? And you say to yourself, who is watching me from in there? That is profound. Who is watching me from within there? From within this body? Because guess what? Someone is. It's learning, learning, it's for us to choose for ourselves, decide for ourselves, make our, you know, make our own decisions, take full responsibility for ourselves, what we do, how we do it, how we decide to do it, period. Take full responsibility for you in every single thing that you do. This is going to be a major transition on this planet. People are going to start realizing they will take responsibility for them, for their lives, for what they do in their lives, for how they operate. They take full responsibility. Now, I'm sure a lot of you understand that there's there's not a lot of people that do that. They point fingers. They blame people or things or situations, or occurrences. You ever, you ever seen that? Have you ever done that? So you point fingers, point fingers to everything outside of you, but not you. It's not my fault. They did it. I ain't saying nothing to do with it. They did it. He did it. She did it. And oftentimes, some of us get caught up in bicameralism. Right and left brain, Unable to think for ourselves, take responsibility for ourselves, guide ourselves, govern ourselves. And we, this is what happens. We can get caught up in it. Because remember, up until about 3,000 plus years ago, we were all unconscious. Walking through life. And every one of us has been there. May not remember in those lives, but we've been there. When each of us can start taking responsibility, decide on our own, embrace it lovingly. From this day forward, I'm going to take responsibility for my life and me. It's empowering. It's strengthening. It's divine. This is part of the journey within. This is part of the journey that we decide to take within.
It's like if someone tells you to do something and you believe what they're telling you, right? You take responsibility for making the decision to do what they have suggested you do, correct? So if something doesn't happen right for you, are you going to blame them or you have to take responsibility for your own life and say, I made the decision to do this and that's it? It's like you get in a fisticuff right with somebody and you push shove or, or someone hauls off and cold cocks the other person and hits them in the face. Okay. Now, those who uh, don't want to take responsibility will say, they made me do it. What do you mean? They made me do it. They got me upset enough where I hit them. It's their fault. That's by cameraism. Now, those who say, not an issue, I, I take responsibility for my actions. See, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. Real biggie. And you watch your fear melt away, too. This isn't arrogance. This is heart-mindedness. This isn't ego mind. This is heart-mindedness. This is in the now. Oh, someone's driving along and you're uh, you're in a parking lot. Usually, ninety percent of all accidents happen in parking lots, right? So you're, you're you're not paying much attention and you're fiddling with something and you hit another car. And then you say something like, "Well, you were driving too fast, so you know it caused me to hit you. Had you been driving slower, I would have not hit you." And and but then those who are who take responsibility for themselves say, "I'm t I take responsibility for this." Uh, I was preoccupied. I should have had my eyes on the on the road, and I didn't, so I damaged your car. You see the difference there? Just in those actions of, of a, that we make our own decisions in this life, that we determine our outcomes in this life, that we take full responsibility for our actions in this life. Because you know what would happen, guys? Think about this. All the fears, frustrations, worries, and stresses would fold away. You know why? Because we would all take responsibility for our lives and any actions or things that we did. So we would know it inherently as a species, a civilization. We would know this. Alan says to Jane, Jane, I take full responsibility for this. Whatever it may be, I struck you, um, I cheated on you, uh, whatever it may be. I take full responsibility for it. Not a lot of that yet. It's coming. This is why staying in the now, and I can say it for the next 20 million years, 30 million years, that this is a massive leap in the right direction for humanity, taking responsibility for your actions and your life. And, and you know, when fear comes in, you know why fear comes in through the ego mind? Because we aren't taking responsibility for our life. We don't feel that we're powerful enough, loving enough to ourselves. Looking in the mirror and saying that you love yourself is a phenomenal therapeutic. You will eventually, and the ego mind will fight it. And your heart will fight it because you put up so many barriers around your heart that to love yourself isn't easy. And once you melt out those walls around your heart, you'll find it very easy to love yourself. In fact, you will say to yourself, I, I, I don't know how I would be any other way now that I've discovered that I do love myself. And then the silent part of this meditation, this is, this is the focus. You eliminate your fear as you love yourself. You reaffirm the fact that you love yourself. You love you. Now imagine how many of us that chose to do that, we decided for ourselves to take the journey within and chose to love ourselves and acknowledge that love that we have for ourselves. What would happen? And then we go into uh, forgiving our fears forgiving our hate and our anger. Usually that stems towards ourselves. 
someone lo- someone yells at you, love under pressure. Because what happens when we don't know how to love ourselves? We're not going to be able to love anybody else. That's why divorce in this planet is so rampant, because we, well, I'm going to get married because everybody else is getting married, or I, I, I'm, a, I'm going to have children because all my friends are having children. Okay? This is, this is what happens. But, well, I tell you what, when you love yourself deeply and dearly and eternally, and you feel it through your heart and mind, every time you say it to yourself, all that melts away. And you, you develop a confidence, not an arrogance, a real strong confidence with yourself. And, see, and then, Dan, see, when you communicate this to yourself, and, and then you, you embrace it. It's, it's automatic. It's, it's not something you force anymore, maybe in the beginning. But then it just becomes a natural state of being. So you can express your feelings to you about you, right? What do you think is going to happen when you meet someone that you have an interest with, intimately, intimate interest, right? Since you've been able to share with yourself how you feel about you and how you love you, what do you think is going to happen when you express that to another? It's going to be a lot different than most people are experiencing today. Now, you know you're not the body, and you're consciously aware. Consciously aware simply means this, that you are aware that you are of and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest eternal love. You know this through your heart mind. And you know that when you look in that body that you're in, you, you'll see seven lights. You will. You'll see seven lights. They'll go from the tailbone to the top of the head. These are known as chakras. And the chakra definition is wheel. These are wheels of light. They're spirit etheric energy. And they're connected to the bodies. Love, joy, peace, hatred, anger, all the emotions, all the organs, all the blood flow, everything down to the quantum cord. And sometimes they can get a little out of whack. These are beautiful colors. They're way beyond anything on this planet. You are omnipotently powerful, spirit, etheric energy. So in reality, you, you flow through the body in a way. And knowing that, knowing that, and, and discovering for yourself that you are the power of healing. Okay? Knowing that, that you are the power of healing, is halfway home. Because eventually, each one of us, we'll be able to heal these bodies in a blink of the eye. We're not there yet. But like I said, acknowledging that is halfway home. Now, picture yourself standing in front of three paths. Okay? This is really important this visualization. It explains why, why so many of us drift off into the future of the past through the ego mind. Now you're standing in the center circle. All, all, the, all the paths that one would stand on are gold, shimmering. And you look out at these three paths in front of you. You're in the now path in the center. The one on the left is the past. The one on the right is the future. And you notice how the trees have formed canopies over these paths. These beautiful golden shimmering leaves and branches and bark. And you notice that the path itself is a brilliant emerald green flaming grass. It appears to be grass. And it's actually a carpet of energy. So you look to the left and you notice that the path on the left, the past, is worn, right? You say to yourself, that's been used a lot. By people. And then you look on the right, and the future is similar. It's very worn. It's been used a lot by people. But you're standing on the now, and you notice that it almost looks brand new. Because the ego mind pulls us into the future, the past, past, future, future, past, past, future. And that's where we suffer. And, it, and that's when it's the master over us. Now, we all go into the past because we all reminisce. We do. It's fun. We, we use, sometimes we use the past of our past experience and stuff to kind of help us in the now. It's a good reference source at times. You know, it's like you, you, you're 
get ready to do something, and then you remember that you did something similar but a different way in the past didn't work, so you're not going to do it the same way. You're going to try a different approach to see if that works. And, and you, you could be driving or talking with people or to get together, just sitting, relaxing, and you start reminiscing. And you, so we, we go into this resource library, which is our, our subconscious mind, which is our library. It's our great hall, and it has everything. Records everything. Records everything the ego mind does. Records everything everybody else outside us does. And then it plays it back more than once. So we'll go up the stairs, and we'll open the door, and we'll walk in, and we turn on light, and we look around and go, wow, this place is massive. I can't even see any walls or ceilings. Look at all this stuff. It's everywhere. Shelves, drawers, it's just loaded. So we just kind of nonchalantly, we'll go through some places, and we'll pick up some movies and some books and some pictures. And then we'll go sit in the easy chair, and we'll watch some of the movies, because there's a big screen there. We'll watch some of the movies, we'll read some of the books, and we'll look at some of the pictures. And we reminisce, oh, that was such a good time. I wouldn't mind doing that again. In fact, that'd be really fun. Have you ever noticed in your life so far that something, that you didn't plan anything, right? And you didn't have any goals set, and you just kind of fell into something, an event, and it was just perfect. You couldn't believe how everything just flowed and everything came together, and you were almost in a state of bliss through your heart. And you're saying, wow, this is phenomenal. You didn't plan. You didn't organize. You didn't structure. You just went with the flow. Or someone said, hey, why don't we just get together, you know, as a group of us, we're just going to get together and just spend time and have a good time. Well, that's outside your norm. But some says, you know what, why not? Sure. Great, we'll see you then. And then when you get, you get, it's one of the best times you've ever experienced. And then when you try to duplicate it, it never happens. See what I mean? So you go with the flow. And you take things in stride, and you love yourself, and you're in deep gratitude and gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, and you flow. And you look at your fears, embrace your fears, let them expand as far as they want, and pass through them. Now, now there's some people that will go in the past, and I don't believe it's conscious, I believe it's unconscious. So they'll go into the past, and they'll stay there so long that they end up taking the past, they bring it into a future that doesn't exist. They create that future from that past and they relive that past and that future. This is why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. Now, all of us will go into the future. You know why we do that? Because the ego mind's got a rope on us. Sometimes a chain is just pulling us, pulling, yanking, yanking, yanking. Z, because then we get in a hurry, and, and we're, we're focused on the physical material world. And so we get in a hurry, we rush. We want to know things. We want to know them now. We, we aren't interested in waiting. We want to know things now. So we go in the future, and we talk with external authorities, you know, tarot card readers, card readers, astro- astrologers, uh, psyches, all kinds of folks. And they provide information. Now, here's a key part of it. You believe what they tell you. And you believe it from your heart and mind. You're going you're gonna to manifest. You're going to create. There's no doubt about that. But most people doubt. They doubt things. And they negate them. You doubt it, it's negated. That's why most people, even though we manifest every split second of our existence, we don't acknowledge it or understand it or know it. And then the things that we do want to have manifested don't happen because we doubt, we don't have the faith, we don't have the faith in ourselves, we don't have the faith in the universe, we don't have the trust in ourselves or the trust in the universe, and we don't have the belief in ourselves and our universe and the confidence. We don't have those. And then we wonder why, why these things don't materialize for us. It's 
yourself can act in. So, two ways, you know, some people just kind of, eh, okay, and take it with them. And others will go, wow, that's, that's really something. That's going to happen. And it's going to happen that soon. So they believe it. And if they stay away from it, if they believe it and they just say, that's a matter of fact, okay, fine, that's going to happen. Then the majority of the time it will happen. But then there's the other times where that little doubt comes in, the ego mind, doubt, the insecurity. Oh, this is probably just garbage. It's just crap. It's not going to happen. They didn't know what they were talking about. And it won't. See, so you know, isn't it amazing how we wish things that are good for us away from us? Now, isn't that something? We wish things that are good for us away from us by trying to make it sound to ourselves that it's not going to happen. So we wish it away even when we're asking for it to come to us. You, you ever done that to yourself? Oh, this isn't going to happen. That's silly thinking for me to think that. That's not just, that's just not possible. So, we, we, and I don't, it's not a conscious thing. It's, it's unconscious and we're making that statement to ourselves without thinking about the fact I am negating the very thing I'm desiring. I'm right with, with gusto. And we send it out through our hearts and say, this is silly. It's not going to happen. What, what, what am I thinking? What can I be thinking that, that this would actually take place for me? Wow. And we use that energy to actually push it away, and it doesn't happen. Now, all of us, we have parts of ourselves that are asleep, stone, cold asleep, parts of ourselves, the gods that we are. We have other parts of us that are, that are awake to a certain extent, consciously awake. It doesn't mean that we don't deeply love the parts that are asleep as much as we do that we deeply love the parts that are awake. We deeply love them both. And the ones that are asleep will wake up in time. Now, we're all connected. We're, we're none of us, and we're not talking about the body. We're talking about the gods within the body. We're all one. So you see someone walking by? The god within that body is part of the god within your body. It's a fact. So you look beyond the body. You look at, you, you, you're focused on the god within that body. And we glow. The God comes into the body. The body is the earth, the God, the soul, the higher self, the kingdom of God, the God source is heaven, heaven on earth. We create paradise every step we take, literally. We're transforming this planet into a God planet paradise, literally doing that right now as, we, as we're in this meditation. Now, if you, if you look at 8 billion on and above and below, human bodies, humanoid bodies, all glowing with the deep eternal love that they're made from within the body. And so, and that, uh, that doesn't include all the trees and bushes and all the other forms of physical presence that gods are experiencing. You could take a trillion suns, group them all together in one ball. They pale in comparison to our light. That's a fact. So, a God planet paradise that glows. Now, we're talking gugaplexes of light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. These light energy beings, right? A gugaplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. Trillions of gugaplexes from trillions of universes. And we're focused on this planet, and we're focused on it so we liberate it. We liberate it from pure, corrupted souls, pure evil, lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, as we're doing in this very moment. We're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. 
and our God force, love, light, energy is and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify, grow, and expand. We immediately form a massive white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Aria. This light emanates from the God source within each and every one of us. It's pure deep eternal love. It's flooding, saturating, and permeating this planet, on it, in it, above it, and below it, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. There's no escape from it. We begin to ascend above the planet, and we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Now, we we try to depict how how this to, to how it looks, how it presents itself. So we take things we're familiar with. We take a grand finale fireworks display, grand finale laser light show, uh, a massive ballroom globe that floods the room with light when light is shined upon it. These are trillions of times more intense and large um, in the universes, and we that we combine it into one big crescendo, and the crescendo in one massive explosion. It's the the the, the, the majesty of it the impact of it. That comes as close as we can get to describing the ocean of glitter. Now, as curious as we are, we look at all the reflective points which are everywhere in the ocean of glitter. And as we get close to some of them, we notice these little tiny, fine, microscopic, perfectly etched mirrors. We enter them and discover that all of us, in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, are teaching and learning from each other all the time. So how do we do this? Do we do it as balls of light? Do we do it as, as pure cosmic celestial energy? No. We do it while in physical form. We teach each other. So specifically, you know, uh, you might, you might, your God, the God that you are, might enter a tree for a couple hundred years to teach others as a tree. And there's, there's many there's many forms of this. You, you take an oak tree, right? Oak tree is stiff and very strong. It doesn't bend, right? So if massive high winds overtake the oak tree, it will split. It will break. Now, the, then we come up with the bamboo tree. And we know that the bamboo bends with the wind. It's resilient. It bends. So the oak tree teaches us, if you don't bend with things in life, you're going to break. And the bamboo tree teaches us, if you bend, you won't break. If the wind gets strong, you bend with the wind. These are all gods inhabiting physical forms to teach us things and it's your perception through your heart mind so when you look at a bug in the rug and you just zero in on it say, i wonder what that bug's teaching me well to that bug the carpet is like the planet to us so it traverses all kinds of things in the carpet but notice it doesn't stop it keeps moving forward And a spider in a web that it created for itself can sometimes be caught itself in its own web if it doesn't pay attention. So what's the spider teaching us? Pay attention to yourself, to the God that you are, always front and center. Dog, cat, pets that you have, right? What do they teach you? They, deep, they teach you deep eternal love. You ever notice how a cat and a dog, they don't have a long memory on revenge or being upset with you or carrying a grudge. It just disappears. It just, it's like one minute you're angry with them for some reason, shoot a shoe or something, and then the next minute, you know, and they got scolded, and they act like it never happened. What are they teaching us? Let it go. Let it go. And, and, and 
you know, our family pets that, that are family members teach us a tremendous amount of things. It's just we don't pay attention. Or oh, they're just a dog. No, they're a god in the dog body. If you have a puppy, right? You remember this? You get the puppy and the puppy says, you got to take me out. You might have a crate trip, have him crate. So you get up when you don't normally get up. You go out when you don't normally go out. And you take a puppy and the puppy does its thing. Puppy's happy. You're up. Normally, that's not your regimen, but the puppy's changed that, right? So the puppy teaches you change is good. So we're always learning. In the event we choose to learn and we don't keep ourselves preoccupied with the external physical material world. Now, we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe inside now, we are protected with a white fire armor, way beyond the armor on this planet. This white fire armor emanates from the gods that we are within these bodies, the pure consciousness, the pure deep eternal love. This is the highest of the highest high frequency. We're enrolled with this. It, you, all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, all demons, all possessions, they can't come close enough to us. They know they'll vaporize. They can't, they can't hold their low vibrational frequency in our, in our so high. They'll, they'll vaporize. So they stay away. No demon possession, none of that, ever, ever, ever. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, you decide to lower your vibrational frequency. Whether consciously or unconsciously, low enough through hatred, anger, greed, fear, Stress, worry, envy, revenge. You will lower your vibrational frequency low enough. You will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all Lord dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then there's all kinds of possibilities with demon possession, attachments, and many other things. Now you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. The first part of the column is the purple transmuting flame. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are then met with the second part of this column of light, this double column of light, the violet ray. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all we can bring in the violet ray right behind a purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden light, pink light. This is the column of light that we created all the gods that we are within these bodies to remind us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the sun sets and the sun rises. We're the clouds in the skies. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the soils. All the animals, we're everything. Everything is us. So the next time you do see any of this, a rainbow, a, a sunset, a sunrise, starry lit night sky, clouds in the sky. You know, we've been trained as separation, as the illusion says, well, that's separate from me. Isn't that beautiful? 
And it is beautiful because it is you, the God that you are. So when you view horizon, sunset, sunrise, you look at it through your heart mind and you say, that is the God that I am. And then, like the planets, the celestials, you can look at those and say, boy, can we make a planet or what? Because no matter where your soul goes, no matter what physical form it inhabits, you will always see parts of yourself throughout existence. Why not get started early on this planet? We continue to ascend above the planet. And some of us who are carrying physical form decide to step out of our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. The reason we do this is because it's fun and we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. Center of the column, we see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, we see this humongous golden white ball of light in turn it's surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond and we discover that they have created this super bright misty cloudy formation flickering and reflecting and flashing and glittering and it's absorbed through our heart mind right through our chest and it feels like a warm embrace that never ends we discover that the golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love. Then comes gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. And we discover that all of that is a reflection of the gods that we are in these bodies. We see our meditative sphere. It sets center circle. We all created this sphere over four years ago. It houses nearly 1,900 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations continue to intensify, expand, and grow. And they're flooding this planet infinity and beyond. Now you figure over hundreds of millions of us, consciously aware to a certain extent, focus, all parts of each other, the gods that we are, focused on this planet's complete liberation. Nothing left unturned. Not a sloppy job, a very thorough complete. Elimination of corrupted souls, pure evil, Elimination of rogue AI essence, goop, black goop. This is what's happening. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever be on it forever. This is why our commitment as light source of pure love to liberate this planet every day, seven days a week without fail. Every day, over four years, sometimes a couple times a day. Now, you can see, it whenever you choose through the heart-mind, what's actually occurring on the planet. And you see this field, it's kind of like a, a perpetual, kind of like a waterfall, but it's clear everywhere. And you see it, it's this golden white pink light, but you can see through it. And you notice that there's all of this black goop and it's vapor evaporating from the planet. It's going up. And everywhere you look, you see this black goop going up. And then you see it as it's going through this field, this golden white pink shimmering field, this lighted field. It's, it's, it's disintegrating as you watch it, pieces of it. And not only that, you look at the sky and the sky is this brilliant, super bright white golden pink light. 
And you see this goop, and it, it, it passes through the field all the way up to the sky, and it, it, it's like flashes. You, you ever see a bunch of flashes going off? That's what it looks like in the sky. It's these flashes as they disintegrate into nothingness. This is infinity and beyond. There's no escape from this. There's no escape from this transition at all. It has been duly decided by the collective consciousness that this is now time. This is the elimination of pure evil and corrupted souls from the planet, Earth, Gaia, Arya. And that's what's transpiring. If we look beyond our physical existence, we'll soon discover the subtle realms and experience the infinite quality of our souls. Take a single glimpse into what is beyond this physical 3D world. It will reveal everything you need to know. Let something higher from the beyond enter you. For five seconds at least, 20 times randomly today, allow yourself to feel the subtle energy inside your physical body. Tune into the, in, that emotional and super subtle energy you feel vibrating within your being. Get curious about what it is like and where it's coming from. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close this out.
take a slow and easy breath in. And a slow and easy breath out the mouth. Be still. For today, don't do your ordinary daily routine. Instead, mix it up and do something completely out of the blue. Doesn't have to be, you know, exaggerate or anything, but mix it up a little. Jump into this extraordinary moment of your life. Now is where now is where you discover that you are divine consciousness. So relax. Don't be anywhere special. Being nowhere, nowhere is the greatest thing you can do to start being now here. Being nowhere is the greatest thing you can do to start being now here. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and fall and morning. We'll return here Thursday, May 19th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call.